my wheel is not turning freely, what should I do? <laughs> Here we have a, a patient, a friend of mine uh, was replacing, uh, fixing a flat tire and when they replaced their wheel, when they put it back, it's no longer turning freely. So from this angle you can see what's going on. You can see it catching against the V-brake. Okay, how do we solve this? I always try to, whenever I'm troubleshooting, to go from the simplest solution towards the more complicated ones. So the first thing that came to my mind was that the wheel was not properly seated in the dropouts. And that's what I will try to fix first to remove the lock so I can access it freely. Now I will release the, the quick release lever and try to push the wheel all the way up so that it is seated properly into the dropouts. Let's, let's give that a try. This is easiest done when the bicycle is on the ground, but let's see. Okay, I've moved it all the way up. Now I'm locking the quick release lever and let's see. No, we still have the same problem. Now I will be looking at the wheel itself. Does it wobble from right behind it? Using the V-brakes as a gauge to see if it is true. And here what I see is that at this section the wheel moves to the left and catches against the V-brake. See? Okay, so considering that the wheel is properly seated and placed in the dropouts and what we've seen here now, I'm suspecting that there is some sort of uh, problem with the wheel trueness. Now why has it come out of true? Well, let's check the spokes first. Maybe some spoke broke or got very loose. The way to, to check for that is to take parallel, parts of, parallel pair, pairs of spokes from each side of the wheel and just squeeze them to feel if they're loose. I'm starting at the valve and I will do the whole turn around the whole wheel. So these look okay. 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 No spokes are out of true. Okay, now what could cause the wheel to go out of true if no spokes are loose or too tight after a tube has been replaced or patched. Well, uh, the first obvious thing that pops to mind is to see if some spoke can be tightened to bring the wheel up to, to be true, but uh, uh, problems with the uh, tire, if it is not seated properly or if it is uh, damaged somewhere with, in the sidewalls, can also cause the wheel to come out to true because the pressure of the tube is not trying to push equally on each side. When there's a part of the tire that is a cracked uh, sidewall, that has a cracked sidewall, that could cause the uneven tension uh, put onto the rim by the tire itself and bringing the wheel out of true. So in order to determine whether that is the problem, I will completely deflate the tire and see if the wheel comes back, back to be true. I open this and now I will press onto the, this is auto or shader valve, so I will press this to loosen the, the air from it. <clears throat> I'll use a five millimeter Allen wrench. As I'm releasing the pressure, I'm pressing onto the tire to make sure that it's completely deflated. And now I will push the opposite sides of the tire to completely remove it off the rim to get it unhooked. 
And now let's see if we have fixed our problem. No, we still have a problem. So the wheel needs truing. But I've noticed another thing. Here from this side it is obvious. We'll try to catch it on camera. See the valve? See the tube? It's getting squashed by the, the tire. Uh, when you're mounting a new tire, I've, I've made a video how to replace a tube, but this is a common mistake. The, the, the part uh, near the tube is where the tube, near the valve is where the tube is a bit wider. So it often gets stuck like this. You need to eliminate this problem by pressing onto the valve to push the, the tube inside. To get it beneath the tire bead, and now it's looking better. I can now put back the, the tire and there, you see, it's now hidden beneath the tire. From this angle it's probably better visible. You can see that there's no, no tube being pinched. So that's one problem. But we still have the problem of the wheel not being true. Okay, the, before I go to true a wheel, I first do a sort of a sort of a test to make sure they're in good condition. So I will with great force squeeze the parallel pairs of spokes going around the whole wheel to see if one of them will break completely. For that I like to use some gloves to not damage my hands. Giving it a good strong squeeze. Trying to see if any spokes will break. Okay, looks good. I like this, uh, I like troubleshooting mechanical problems and, and even computer related problems. It's uh, what I enjoy most about uh, these kinds of, of jobs because it uh, puts your mind to work and you need to observe carefully and try to find the, the problem cause and how to fix it. So it's, uh, if you take it easy, one step at a time, it's very enjoyable and uh, nice experience but if you try to rush and skip some steps it can be very frustrating and you never can find the problem source. I always try to be as methodical as possible and do things and check things one step at a time and see what, what's involved and how it affects each other. So the, that's why I first checked the, the wheel placement in the, in the frame, then I checked the, the tire and the tube, is that causing the problems? And now I will I check the spokes whether they are broken and only then I will try to do some wheel truing. I'm also eyeballing the frame to see if there's any problems with the frame. But because the wheel is obviously wobbling, I'm not suspecting a frame some sort of deformation to be causing this. Because if that were the case, uh, it would always be scratching on one side. But here I can see that there is a section where the, where the rim moves to the left side of the bicycle. It's, it's definitely not true. So I'm giving it another look to see how it behaves. It looks nicely until it comes to that part. Okay, we'll try to catch it from this angle on camera. Here you can clearly see the part where the wheel just wobbles to the left, the rim, sorry. And then as you pass that point, it's every, everything's good again. So I'm suspecting that either these spokes that pull the rim towards the left side are too tight, but they couldn't tighten by themselves. Spokes can loosen by themselves if the wheel is not built properly or if you hit something and get a dent in the rim, but they cannot tighten themselves by themselves. So uh, the first thing I will check is whether the right hand side spokes are a bit less tight on this side. Here I'm checking on the spokes from the right hand side near that section where we have a problem. I'm feeling it by hand which is not very precise but it, I can see if they are in the ballpark and no, there, there are no loose spokes. Okay, before I start tightening anything, I want to check if the hub or the rim is cracked. 
so the spokes are trying to pull out of it and no longer pushing the rim in the right direction. So I'll clean this section that is suspicious. And I will also check on the hub near that section. Let's see where it is. I'll mark it. Here we have some tape. I like using this and let's see. Okay. This is roughly the point where the problems start. Okay. I will mark it using a left hand side spoke because I'm probably not going to touch this. And let's see, where does it end? Uh, about here. All right. Past this point, the wheel, mo the rim moves away from the V-brake. All right. Now I'm inspecting to see if there are any cracks on the rim near the, the spokes. This all looks good. It's a nice strong rim from what I can tell. All right. Now I'm inspecting the hub. I'll get it back to the starting point. Okay. And so here, this spoke from the right hand side goes here into the hub. As we turn. Here, this is the last one coming in here. All right. I don't see any cracks on the hub. Sometimes you can see this cracked, the, the flanges, and uh, sometimes it's completely loose. But here it looks more or less okay. All right, now taking all that into consideration, we probably need to just chew the wheel. I already made a video about uh, bicycle wheel building tools and there I explained this tension meter and it makes my life a bit simpler and easier. I want to check if any of the right hand side or left hand side spokes are too tight or too loose before I start any chewing. So that's the first thing that I will do. We always start at the valve. Whenever you do anything spoke related, always start at the valve so you can end there and you know that you've done a full circle. Otherwise you might end up doing several and making a mess. If you don't do it that way, you'll know why, why I say this. Okay, I'm starting with the right hand side spokes and measuring their tensions. They are about 80 kilogram force. Within 20% variation is more or less acceptable. It's ideal if you can get it to within 10%, but if I'm trying to troubleshoot a problem, I disregard those spokes that are not over 20% tighter or, or less tight, looser. So this all looks acceptable. I wouldn't charge for a wheel build like this, but it is acceptable. Okay, the right hand side spokes are all, bet all between 100 and, uh, oh sorry, 95 and uh, 75 uh, kilogram force. That's not too bad. Let's see about the left hand side spokes. Here we are about 60. Less than 60, a bit more. All right, this one is, it's not too bad. Okay. Where is the valve? Have I missed the valve? Here it is. Still haven't done the full circle. About 60 to 70 uh, kilogram force, not too bad. And now I need to do some wheel truing. Uh, why has this wheel come out of true so much? I really don't know. Maybe it was some sort of a bump or a dent 
that's another thing that I want because we don't come out to true from bumpy roads. Either a spoke gets loose or something gets cracked or a rim gets dented. So I will check now to see if the rim has any dents. I will be using this as a alignment check and make the wheel turn for the full circle to see if it's come a bit down anywhere. Now let's see starting at the valve. Here it is. I'm looking at this. It looks okay. Uh, this is more precisely measured using a truing stand, but we are using a do-it-yourself system here. You can turn the frame, the bicycle upside down, just carefully, make sure not to scratch anything, and use your rim brakes or put a zip tie if you have these brakes to, to gauge the wheel for trueness. And that is how I'm going to true this wheel now. Like uh, do-it-at-home system. Let's see. This is the, the section that, that has problems from here to here, roughly. And let's start from the top, around here. Okay, I'll double check the, the spoke tension on the right hand side near this section. Okay, this one is just below 80 kilogram force. All right. Looks good, a bit under, this one is tight, but when we tighten the, the adjacent one, this one will lose some tension, because the adjacent right hand side spoke will take some load. Okay, this one could use some tightening, this one looks okay. Okay, now to double check the left hand side spokes to see if some, some of them need tightening or loosening. Sorry. Okay. About 80, 60, 60, about 70, about 80, about 70, on under 60. Okay. The first thing that I will try to do is to see about those right hand side spokes that were a bit <clears throat> under tensioned and then I will see about loosening the left hand side spokes. The problem is that the left hand side spokes are quite loose already because the rim needs to be moved uh, further to the right uh, relative to the flanges. So. Maybe, maybe loosening is not a good idea because they might get loosened during rides later. I will just stick to tightening the right hand side spokes for start. And for spokes, 3.3 uh, millimeter and 3.45 millimeter spoke keys are usually, usually, they usually fit and the ones that catch the nipple on all four sides that have just the, this slot inside are the the best, they don't the risk, you don't risk damaging the nipple that way. So I will use, see the smallest one that fits, trying with the 3.3 millimeter one. It's not fitting, okay, 3.45. Okay, that's a nice tight fit, that's what we are going to use. And I'm going to the right hand side of the wheel to tighten the spokes. When I'm tightening this, uh, I, ne I need to tighten because they are coming in from this side, the nipples. So this is the, the way to tighten them. If I turn it the other way, I will loosen them. So it's a bit counterintuitive, but, but it does work. I'm turning it. If I don't feel the nipple turning, if I see the spoke twisting, by the time I reach almost half a turn, I give up. That means that the nipple has seized to the spoke and if I continue tightening it, it will break, the spoke will break. This looks okay. I've done about half a turn, just over that, and now I'm going back a bit to untwist the, the spoke. 
Now let's go to the next one. I haven't lubricated this. I'm doing this like just twi uh, quick and dirty way now. It's it's far from perfect. Okay, you could hear the crack. That's the nipple getting unstuck from the spoke. That's good. All right. Moving on. I can sense and see the spoke twisting along with the nipple. Let's make that more visible. Here, this will show it, hopefully. You can see. Uh, will it crack? No, it stopped turning with the nipple. Good. And now I will just unwind the spoke a bit. All right, moving on. Let's see what we have achieved, if anything. It's better, still far from perfect, but better. I'll move this just a little bit further, hopefully it will stay in place and continue. I'm tightening the right hand side spoke near that place. And the next one. Here's a spot where it comes really close. Okay, it's looking usable now. What I will do now is to reinflate the tire and double check again to see if we are anywhere having problems again. Because if the tire is imperfect and has some problem, it might cause the rim to come out to true again. Okay, let's recheck. It's looking better. Let's see about the spoke tensions. How bad is it now?
Okay, here I have one spoke with over 100 kg force tension. Next to a spoke that has below 80 kg force Newton, uh, 80 kg force tension. So the way to fix this is to loosen a bit the spoke that has high tension and tighten the adjacent spoke to have a more or less uniform tension. That's what I will do. Okay, this is the problematic one. I will loosen it a bit by quarter of a turn. And I will tighten the adjacent spoke. That should keep the rim still more or less shrewd, but with a more uniform spoke tension. I will loosen this by quarter of a turn and I'm tightening this by half a turn. Then doing it back a bit to untwist the spoke and now we'll see. Okay, better. It's more uniform now, but I should loosen this just a little bit. Okay, good. And here we have another pair of, with a similar problem, but it's less, a lot less severe. So here before touching anything, I will spin the wheel to see what going, what's going on when they are in play. Does the, does the rim come too far away in that spot? Yes, a bit. So I will out of these two, here they are, I will loosen the, the tight one a bit, just by quarter of a turn. Okay, looks better. All right, okay. This is what I call a quick and dirty way to throw a bicycle wheel. The, it's always easier and uh, perhaps even a bit more precise, but not necessarily easier to do it with a, in, in a throwing stand so you can see more clearly. This takes a bit more time. And I usually use zip ties, not just the brake pads, because I can set the zip, zip ties to some uh, distance that I find perfect for the phase that I'm in. So, so it's a bit, bit simpler, but if you want to just quickly get back on the road up and running, if you don't have a tension meter in hand, you can use a guitar plug or, which is the least uh, precise method, but you can use your feel, your fingers, to see if some spokes are very loose or, or too tight. And get the, the wheel back to the decent shape so you can get home and when you do, want to do a proper wheel throwing, especially when a wheel has uh, faced a problem after being ridden for a while, I usually like to loosen spokes and see if the rim is deformed, because when all the spokes are loose, you can see if there is some noticeable big bend in the rim, either uh, left, right or up, down, laterally or radially, yes. So uh, th that would take a, a lot of time and uh, it's what I would call a proper a wheel chewing, uh, it would also be a good idea to clean and lubricate everything before doing any job, but if you have a problem down the road, this is about how you would do it, uh, usually by turning the bicycle upside down, which can cause some, uh, those who have hydraulic brakes, disc brakes, uh, you can get some air in the system depending on whether the, the system is completely full or there's an air bubble near the lever on the top in the canister. So. That is a bit risky for those kinds of bicycles and you don't have e-brakes, so you have to carry some zip ties. But uh, I hope I've shown and explained uh, how, how to do this and the basic uh, principle and method for troubleshooting. And we'll give this bicycle a test ride and see if it really works or if it was just a very temporary patch. I expect this bicycle to be okay now in a rideable condition and I expect to see this, uh, we'll see uh, a lot more miles before it needs replacing. The, the side walls where the brakes are working are getting a bit worn, but they are still okay. This is how to check for that. You take something that is flat, 
put it against it and look for the gap in the middle. You can see the gap here between the, the tool and the, the rim. It's very small, it's almost completely flat, so it's not, it's not very worn. So that, that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope this was at least a bit useful to someone and cheers. I almost forgot a very important thing for, especially for mechanics doing this and also for home mechanics if you're working on your bicycle. Here we, I started with an assumption that the problem had occurred after replacing the tire. But based on what I could see, uh, the most probable explanation is that the problem had existed before and it was only noticed after my friend had replaced there and fixed their uh, punctured tube. And that is another thing that uh, uh, you shouldn't always trust yourself and your observations when you're just casually riding uh, compared to the observations that you make when you're closely inspecting the bicycle. Uh, I'm not sure how well I've explained this, but put in other words, let's say that uh, you are looking at yourself as a client or you are working with a client. Never take what they say for granted, not because they want to lie to you. That happens also, but because people don't always observe things properly, carefully, or they're not trained or experienced. So they might, with the best intentions, give you information that is misleading or completely false. So uh, listen carefully, observe carefully, but do take it all with a grain of salt and use your own judgment and experience and try to figure it out. It's best if you can have a back and forth communication, but of course no one will sit next to you while you're fixing their bicycle. They will usually drop it off, but when you are taking your bicycle in for, for fix, uh, make sure to get as much information as you can and to ask questions in a polite, patient way, but that can solve you some uh, headache and problems in the long run. And it can also help you prevent uh, the problem of people coming back saying you haven't fixed the problem that they had noticed because of the problem with communication for whatever reason, but uh, it happens. So uh, I'm not sure whether this is helpful or confusing this part, but I thought it was important to, to note it. So based on the test ride and on the everything that I could see, uh, this wheel was probably out of true even before the tire, the tube got punctured. And uh, it, we will see in the following weeks and months how well this wheel handles. And uh, that's now finally it. Thank you for watching and <laughs> cheers. Hi, if you like this video and you like what I'm doing, you can of course subscribe and use this option, this bell and uh, select all so that you get notified and never miss a new video that I publish. And if you wish to support me financially, you can do so on my bike.bygarmin.com webpage slash support and choose either PayPal or Patreon donation where you can choose the amount per your liking and help me make more and uh, videos of higher, higher quality. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, help and support over the past years. Cheers.